Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's May 14th, 2018. You are watching the Theo Knight video. Let's get started with what amounted to an incredibly boring trading session. S&Ps, all right, come on. There's a minute left of the day and they're down a buck 75. That, people, is what we term massively unchanged. However, in the midst of a little bit of a lull in terms of some of the intraday movement, there's still quite a bit of opportunity and I'm going to show you a few areas of that opportunity here in this evening's video. First and foremost, you'll see a line on my screen. That line I have tentatively drawn in at 2731. It appears that that happens to be a specific what we'll term gravity point. That is an area okay, where the marketplace is likely drawn to. It would not surprise me that even in the after hours here that we actually draw right back up into the 2731 handle. If we take a look back at some of the recent trade, you know, all I'm doing is dropping back to a 30 day, one hour chart, and we'll actually see lots of trade in and around this particular area. Uh, again, we believe at this point, we probably have identified a, uh, a degree of a gravity point. I'll also go back just a little bit further in time for those of you that are uh, more interested in, again, a bit of a longer time frame. Come over to time frame, take this out to uh, 90 days, and we'll go 90 days, for example, all the way out for uh, two hours, hit OK, and you can see the uh, gravity point coming into play a number of times over the last 90 days. So at this point in time, again, a tentative gravity point here at 2731, more identification is likely necessary. Nevertheless, as I was saying just moments ago, we're really likely, there's the closing bell, we're really likely to, uh, to close right in and around this level of this uh, 2731. Now, let's back away for just a second from the S&P futures and talk about some of the opportunities that did exist on this intraday basis, then I'm going to look at a broader opportunity in the markets. So one thing I want to start with is today, the S&Ps today, we're really pricing in about a $10 move, but from uh, kind of high over here, and again, I'll just highlight this really quick. This is the uh, the session high, was right around 2741 to absolute low, uh, 2726. One of the things that I mentioned inside of the weekend video was specifically about how large the ranges were on an intraday basis and those ranges providing opportunity. Well, we found opportunity. Speaking of opportunity, there we are, 2731. We got ourselves, does appear to be a gravity point, a market being pulled right into kind of a comfortable zone for trade at the 2731. As I was saying, and I'll elaborate a little bit on this. So we did put an intraday trade on today. And of course, even though we're watching the S&P futures, we're often trading the spiders. You know, why watch one trade the other? Because the opportunities inside of the spiders, you know, at the money options, and this is the point I wanna make in, in, you know, in light of the fact that volatility is relatively low, even at the money options. Now, what we're looking at here happens to be an option expiration that happens this Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Do you realize like the at the money options are trading for a dollar? At the money options here are trading for right around a dollar and you still have, uh, again, Tuesday and Wednesday into that expiration. It is significant, all right? I mean, there's no other way to put it. When I say it is significant, take a look at what's capable, uh, again, on an intraday basis. And you're thinking about like capability, you're like, well, what exactly uh, might you mean with uh, with capable? Well, here's some of my activity and positioning today. So I put on a number of contracts and I put them on earlier this morning. We went out and we paid 33 cents for these puts. We're able to get out of them for 90 cents. Now, yeah, you know, you're not going to go out there and you're going to trade one contract. You can see I kind of, you know, got out of them in, in two different uh, lump sums over here. But we went out and bought puts for 33 cents. And uh, again, you're looking at, you know, 100, 200 you know, even 300% returns on an intraday basis with only having 33 cents at risk. And the point that I was making on the weekend video is, you know, you could be dead wrong. Well, what kind of risk do you have? Uh, what, 33 cents? That's, uh, you'd be dead wrong today, you could be dead wrong tomorrow. You only really have to hit it out of the park once in a week. And we did it on Monday. Now, 
let's move into an area that I think is a bit more opportunistic, not necessarily on an intraday trade. And I recognize that many of you that tune into these kind of evening videos, maybe you can't necessarily trade on an intraday basis. Totally get it, respect it, live that life for a long time. With that, let's get to the emerging markets, okay? I think there could be a decent opportunity inside of emerging markets in the coming days. All right, the emerging markets, if you're unfamiliar with this EEM, the EEM is one of the most heavily traded products in the industry. Now that's hard for people to believe because they're just like, well, I don't even know the EEM. Open up, okay, any given option chain in here, just pull volume and open interest. Just the point that I wanna make with this is, this is a product that not everybody necessarily looks at. Look at this, 29,000 contracts, 90, 4,000 open, that's 12,000 that traded a day. Listen, tens of thousands of contracts, 20,000 contracts trade here. Look at the open interest in this thing. And if you've never looked at the EEM, it's time you wake up. It is truly one of the most liquid products in the entire industry that, you know, nobody has this discussion about the EEM though, but not only is it liquid, I think there's, there's great trades and great setups in this product. Here's a light day. Again, this is a light day inside of EEM and it traded approximately 237,000 contracts. Now, what is some of the opportunity that I currently see in the EEM? This is a product that has been fading and it's been fading along with what? Interest rate risk, obviously interest rate risk can really impact the emerging markets, but more than even interest rate risk happens to be the trajectory of the dollar. Now, if you haven't seen the recent move in the dollar, you've missed everything. The dollar has been straight up well, guess what? The dollar, okay, came in for literally one, two trading sessions. It reversed again today. I just wanna show you this. So the dollar opened weak, ripped back to the upside. Now you can actually see it again in this broader chart. So the dollar opened weak, ripped back to the upside. It does appear that the dollar, which has been on this wild trajectory to the upside, this is nothing more than a little stop along the way to continued upside trajectory in the dollar. If that is true, the EEM will very likely see some downside potential, all right? So we've got a marketplace in the EEM that has slipped, just recently slipped from the 50 level all the way down to the mid 40s, bounced back up to about 47.5. How do you construct a trade in here? Now, I don't wanna get cute, I don't wanna get crazy. I just wanna go out and create a little bit of directional bias, a little bit of directional risk. I'll go and I'll hunt around in the 32 day window. Okay, that would give me enough time ultimately to be right, enough time to be wrong. Again, I believe the ultimate trajectory of the dollar is probably still to the upside. It's very likely to put some pressure on the emerging markets, uh, specifically the emerging market ETF. Now, how do I construct a trade around this? It's about 47 half. I can come over here to the uh, 48 halves. Okay, so I can come over here to the 48 halves, maybe sell the 46 halves against it. This trade is done for about a 93 cent debit. Obviously, by the time you are seeing this and you know the markets reopen tomorrow, pricing may have changed. Great, okay? There's more than enough liquidity, even in these half strikes over here, that's not even a question about liquidity inside of the EEM. And on a trade like this, all you're trying to do, okay, is first of all, you realize it's about a $2 expected move, but all you're trying to do on a trade like this is to make about 55%, again, to make about 55% on whatever your risk happens to be. So in this example, if you have 93 cents of risk, multiply it times 1.55 equals about a buck 44. So after you get filled at about 93 cents, okay, you can put an order, good sell cancel, to exit the trade at about a dollar 44. There's no stop order, okay? And why in the world, why in the world would you wanna do a trade? And I want you to think about this logically because we're gonna be talking about this in the Theo Trade chat room consistently. Why would you want to do a trade that has 93 cents of risk, okay, to make what? You know, in the end, all right, you're not even making, then you're not even making the full dollar 44. You're trying to exit the trade for a dollar 44. So in effect, what are you trying to make on this trade? Maybe about 50 cents. So you're trying to make 50 cents by risking 93 cents. How does that even work? Like, why does that work? And the answer lies, okay, in the fact that the probability of making the 50 cents. And this is where people don't really get it's probability of touching, okay? But then there's probability of what we term profitability. And in this case, the probability of profitability 
is substantially higher. So the probability of making the 50 cents is substantially higher than losing the 93 cents. Hence why we consider these in-out spreads one of the mainstays of the strategies that we use. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theotrade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.